All right, so moving on to the photosynthetic reactions. Now let's first look at the light reactions. So there are two main groups of reactions that occur in photosynthesis. First, we have the light reactions, which are going to absorb sunlight energy. And then we have the carbon reactions, which is mainly the Calvin cycle. And that's where we make the sugars. All right. So the first are the light reactions. These are the reactions of photosynthesis that harvest light energy and store that energy in molecules. And the main molecules that we're going to make, as you can see right here, are ATP and NADPH. Now, NADPH, just like NADH and FADH2, those is an electron carrier. All right? So let's look at these things called photosystems. Now, a photosystem is a cluster of pigments that absorb light energy. And this is shown like, you know, a computer generated look of a photosystem. And this is like the cartoon version of this that we're going to see here in the next few slides. As you can see, that photosystem, these pigments, are within the membranes of the thylakoids. All right, so if we go to the next picture here, it shows the two photosystems that are involved here. Now, unfortunately, the first photosystem to occur is actually called photosystem two. And the reason for this is because photosystem two was discovered second, all right? So photosystem one was discovered second, or discovered first, but uh, it occurs second, so don't blame me for that. All right, so let's look at the steps uh, in these photosystems, and for the most part, they're fairly similar. All right, so the first step here is that sunlight energy is absorbed by these photosynthetic pigments. That energy is then directed onto chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A puts that energy onto these two electrons, which you can see here, and then those two electrons go to the electron transport chain. Now, I'm not going to get into all the particulars of the electron transport chain because we did that last chapter, but you know the electron transport chain, we make ATP there. All right? And then what's going to happen is those, that chlorophyll A, because it lost two electrons, those two electrons need to be replaced. And so what happens here is sunlight energy is used to break a water molecule into hydrogen ions, free oxygen, and those two electrons. Those two electrons then go back to that chlorophyll A because that chlorophyll A lost those two electrons. This right here though, that oxygen that is created here when we break up water, that is all the oxygen that is found in our atmosphere. So all the oxygen that we breathe comes from this photosystem too. All right, so, now let's move on to photosystem one. Now photosystem one works uh, very similarly to photosystem two. In photosystem one, sunlight energy is absorbed by the photosynthetic pigments. That energy is then put onto chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A directs that onto two electrons, which those two electrons are then put onto NADPH. All right, so, this chlorophyll A has now lost two electrons, and it gets those two electrons from the electron transport chain. So these electrons that were used in the electron transport chain are then put onto chlorophyll A here, then energy is uh, uh, put onto those, and then that's put onto NADPH. So this is what we see what happens here, is that if we go back to the beginning here, chlorophyll A receives two electrons from water being broken up. That also creates the oxygen, all the oxygen that we breathe. Photosynthetic pigments are going to absorb sunlight energy. And they're going to attach that energy onto chlorophyll A, which puts that energy on those two electrons, which then goes to the electron transport chain, producing ATP. And then those two electrons go to photosystem one on that chlorophyll A. Sunlight energy is absorbed by all the photosynthetic pigments, it directs that to chlorophyll A, which puts those onto two electrons, which those two electrons are put onto NADPH. So that's what ultimately happens, those two electrons that came from water way over here.